In this unit, we're going to focus on solving equations. In this lesson, we're going to solve equations where there are multiple terms with a variable on both sides of the equation. Okay, hi everybody. In this lesson here, we're going to take a look at what we're, what we're going to call type 6 equations. Okay, now type 4 equations and type 5 equations were equations that required a little bit of simplification on, on either side here uh, before you could go through the process of solving. Um, but in those previous cases, the variable, the x variable that we were looking for was really just on one side of the equation. Now what we're looking at is the situation here where you've got an, equ uh, an equation where that x is going to end up on both sides. And so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to simplify. Whoops. Sim okay, yeah, that's what happens when I can write faster than the... Uh, I can write faster than the computer can see, and then I, I lose track of what I wrote. Okay, we're going to simplify, and then we're going to bring both term. Then we're going to bring x's to one side. Okay, we're going to bring all x terms to one side. Now, and when I say um, x terms, I really just mean variable terms. Okay, whoops, all x terms should just be uh, variable terms to one side here so that we can solve for the variable. Now, like it says uh, here, um, when in this, this paragraph right here, it says, you will then obtain an equation that has a variable term and a constant term on either side of the equation here. It is recommended to move the variable expression with the smaller coefficient to the other side by adding the additive inverse to both sides. So in other words, the, the reason why we want to do that, you want to bring this to move the smaller number here is so that you can avoid division by a negative. Now, that being said, and th that is the smart thing to do, and, and when I'm working on an assignment kind of on my own or I'm working through something and keying it for students or whatever, that's typically what I will do. However, I know that a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people by default uh, leave the variable on the left-hand side of the equation because it looks better there uh, for most of us. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at two students working through the, the same equation here. So we're working through this, this negative 3x minus 1 equals 5x plus 7. Now notice what student A does. Student A is going to move the negative 3x over. They're going to add 3x to both sides because uh, right now in the initial equation here, the negative 3 is smaller than the, the 5. So we add that to both sides, and then we're going to subtract the 7 from both sides here. That's going to get us negative 8 is equal to 8x, and then they divide both sides by 8 to get negative 1 is equal to x, which is fine, by the way. There's nothing wrong with that answer. But then we typically put the x on the left-hand side um, just to communicate the answer. That is just a kind of a thing that we do. Uh, it's not wrong to leave it like this. That's, that's correct. It just looks better to write it as x equals negative 1. Uh, this one, on the other hand here, student B, what student B did is they moved the, the 5x over. They subtracted 5x from both sides, and that got us negative 8x minus 1 is equal to 7. And they added 1 to both sides to get negative 8x is equal to 8. And then they divided both sides by that coefficient and got negative 1. And so there you go. We're still getting the same answer in both cases here. So... Explain the difference between the students' solutions, okay? Um, so what happened here was in one case, it was, it was which side? The difference is, okay, the difference is which side of the equation they brought the variable to. Uh, and then the answer is, sorry, which is the correct way? Uh, they're both fine. They are both fine. Now, the issue, though, is, this is the big issue, uh, they're both fine as long as you're comfortable with the negative sign. You're, you're, you're okay manipulating an equation with a negative sign in it. If you know kind of deep in your heart that that's not the way that's going to work here, then what you really want to do is you want to do it this way. You want to move the smaller term over because that will 
that will allow you to avoid multiplication or division by a negative in a later step. Let's take a look at some problems. Okay, let's solve some equations here. So to start off with, um, we've got this 5x minus 21 my, uh, equals negative 2x. Now, I'm going to bring that negative 2x over to the other side. Now, I've got kind of two reasons for doing this, and I'm going to be pretty consistent about this. Experience has told me that the vast majority of people, even if it is makes the, question, the equation uh, somewhat easier to work with by moving the, uh, the smaller number over, most people are going to de default to moving um, the x terms over to the left-hand side. That's just the way people are going to do it. So I'm going to sort of be consistent with that uh, just to help people out. Okay, so the first thing we do is that 2x over. I need to get the x terms together. I need it to get so that there's 1x and then I isolate the x on the one side of the equation. So now I've got 1x. That's what I wanted to do here. So now I need to get that term over. So 7x is going to equal 21. And then we divide by that coefficient and we get that x is equal to 3. And that's what we were looking for. For this next one, same sort of thing. My first step is going to be to bring the 8m over to the other side. And that is going to get me 4m minus 5 is equal to 35. And once I've got the m terms together and I've got it so that there's just one term with m in it now, now I can, I can kind of default to the old ways of solving this. I'm going to move that second term over by adding it to both sides. So I will get 4m is going to equal 40. And now I can divide both sides by 4 to get that m is equal to 10. For this next one here, I, what I've got here is, again, I want to get the, the ends together. And I'm going to just move everything over to the left-hand side. So 7n minus 5n is 2n plus 10 is equal to 15. Now I'm going to move that second term over. By subtracting that for both sides. So 2n is going to equal, okay, it's going to be equal to 5. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get that n is equal to, well, there's not much I can do with that. So it's just going to be 5 halves. That's it. Now, for this one right here, it honestly, it would be easier. It would honestly be easier to move the negative 4 over to the right-hand side. But I know that a lot of people just just won't do that. A lot of people will still bring that 6x over to get the x's together. So this will become 20 minus 10x is equal to 0. Uh, and actually, then I, sus I suspect a lot of people will, will write this in the right order. Actually, you might even have written that first one in the right order, written it as, as uh, sorry, you would have written that as not, not 20, you would have written that as negative 4x plus 20 equals 6x. And then you would have brought that over. In any case, you're going to get it down to here. Then we're going to subtract 20 from both sides to get negative 10x is equal to negative 20. And then you would have divided both sides by negative 10 to get that x is going to equal 2. Okay. Again, nothing wrong with, with doing it either way. Uh, but again, I'm defaulting to doing it uh, the way I'm doing it, to bringing the, the variable to the left-hand side, simply because I think that's what most people will do. So for this question right here, same sort of thing. I am going to subtract the 2m from both sides. And that'll give me m minus 9 is equal to 12. And then we will add the 9 to both sides so that we can isolate the m. And actually, it turns out in this case, this is like a type 1 equation. Uh, so immediately, we're going to get the answer here that m is going to equal 21. That, that actually simplified down quite nicely. Uh, and because, simplified nicely, because the coefficient of the m here was just 1. Now, in this case right here, here's another example where it would technically be easier if we brought the ends to the right-hand side. But let's not do that. We're going to subtract. Whoops, I'll do that in black there. We're going to subtract the n from both sides. So now, in this case here, I have to now I have to pay attention that it's going to be one quarter n minus n minus four thirds is equal to negative one half. 
Um, okay, so this is going to be the same as like 1 over 1. So I'm going to have to multiply numerator and denominator by 4 to get a common denominator there. So 1n over 4 minus 4n over 4 minus 4 thirds equals negative 1 half. So this is going to end up becoming um, negative 3 quarters n minus 4 thirds is equal to negative 1 half. Then I'm going to add the 4 thirds to both sides, and that's going to get me negative 3 quarters n. Okay, so negative 1 half plus 4 thirds. All right, there's a common denominator there of uh, 6. So it'll be negative 3 sixths plus 8 sixths. Sixths. Huh. So negative 3 quarters n, that is going to equal 5 sixths. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 3 quarters. So this will be n, well, negative 3 quarters. So n will equal 5 sixths multiplied by negative 4 thirds. Ah, so what does that get us? That gets us negative 20 over 18. And those are both even numbers. So I can divide those both by 2 to get negative 10 over 9. Hoy, that was a long one. Man, that was a lot of work, hey? But you know, that one could have been done uh, a fair bit quicker. That one could have been done a fair bit quicker here. So I am going to erase what I just did there. Okay, I'm going to erase what I just did. I'm going to show you a quicker way to do this question. Okay, I might not even erase everything that I did, just to illustrate that there is a quicker way to do this. Although, again, if you're if you're not thinking about it, you don't... You can do it that way, that I just did it. But there is a quicker method here. And the quicker method is to multiply right off the bat by the lowest common multiple of the denominators, 4, 3, and 2. 4, 3, and 2, those all have a multiple of 12. So when I do that, I get 12 over 4n minus, uh, oh boy, what do I got here? 48 over 3 equals negative 12 over 2 plus 12n. Now, 12 uh, over 4 is going to be 3, uh, 3n. Negative 48 divided by 3 is negative 16. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6 plus 12n. And now I'm going to subtract 12n from both sides. Again, it would be easier to move to the right-hand side, but that's, that's not what I suspect a lot of people will do, so you just have to pay attention to the negatives. So 3n minus 12n will be negative 9n minus 16 equals negative 6. I will add 16 to both sides to get negative 9n is equal to 10. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 9. So we get 10 is, uh, not, n is equal to negative 10 over 9, which is the same thing I got over here. It just took a lot longer to do it that other way, right? Okay, so now it would be your turn. So what I want you to do here is take a few moments here, just kind of pause the video, and start working on, on these equations here. But I'm just going to solve them. So here we go. So to start off with, I am going to add uh, 2n to both, uh, sorry, yeah, I'm going to bring the 2n over. I'm going to add 2n to both sides here. No, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just kidding. What I'm going to do here, first of all, is I'm going to make my life just a little bit easier, and I am going to convert that mixed fraction into uh, an improper fraction. So 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. This will be negative 11 over 2 minus 2n. And then what I'm going to do is multiply by the, the lowest common multiple of the denominators, which is going to be 4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the denominator. And so this will end up becoming 7n plus 2 equals negative 22 minus 8n. And this is a much nicer equation to solve. I will add 8n to both sides to get 15n plus 2 is equal to negative 22. Then we will bring 
the the constant over so it'll be 15n is equal to negative 24 and then we will divide by the coefficient of the variable and we get that n is equal to negative 24 over 15 um, and that can be reduced because they're both factors of or they're both multiples of 3 so that'll be negative 8 whoops negative 8 over 5 good for this next one I am going to add 3k to both sides and that is going to give me negative 3k minus 5 is equal to now okay on the right hand side notice I've got a 1 minus 41 okay let's just write that down as negative 40. then I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get the k term by itself so it'll be negative 35 and now I will divide both sides by negative 3 and that will get me, well, negative by a negative is positive. So 35 over, that is about as nice as that's going to get. 35 over 3, yeah. Because 35 um, is not a, a multiple of 3. Now for this last one, first thing I got to do is deal with those sets of parentheses. I have to distribute those numbers through here. So this becomes 8x plus 32 minus 6 is equal to 2x plus 8. Now I'm going to bring the 2 over to the left-hand side. So this is going to get me 6x. Now, and I've got a 32 minus 6. So I'm just going to do that. That's going to be plus 26. And then on the right-hand side, I've got this 8 left over. Now I'm going to subtract 26 from both sides, and that is going to get me 6x is equal to negative 18. And then I'm going to deal with the coefficient. So divide by 6. And when I do that, negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. Okay. So I hope that's what you got. And I hope uh, this extra little layer of algebra here isn't throwing you off too much. Uh, all we're doing is adding a step where you've got to bring the, the, the terms with the same variable over to the same side. And like I said, what I've done here is modeled uh, what would happen if you always brought it over to the left-hand side.